Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eric Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. John's First Universal Letter, chapter 3, verses 21 through 24, and chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Brethren, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. All who keep his commandments abide in him and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are of God, or many false for many pro- false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit which confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit which has not confessed Jesus is not of God. This is the Spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard that it is coming. And now it is in the world already. Little children, you are of God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore what they say is of the world. And the world listens to them. We are of God. Whoever knows God listens to us. And he who is not of God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And he who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his Son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And today's reading from the Gospel is St. Mark's uh, Gospel from chapter 14, verses 43 through 72, chapter 15, verse 1. At that time, while Jesus was speaking to the disciples, Judas Iscariot came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and they seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all forsook him, and they fled. And the young man followed him but not, with nothing but a linen cloth around his body. And they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes were assembled. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none, for many bore false witness against him, and their witness did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We have heard him say, I will destroy the temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet not even so did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he was silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and he said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him and say to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows, 
And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the maids of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You are also with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I know not I, nor, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went into the gateway, and the cock crowed, and the maid saw him, and began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, again the disciple, uh, the bystander said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. And he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and he wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes of the whole council held a consultation, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. And continuing with our readings from the prologue from Ochrid. Today's poem, or hymn, is dedicated to St. Polycarp. His holy one God, his holy ones, God preserves, that until their appointed time they do not perish, until they complete their task they do not perish. The elder Polycarp and saint of God with his deacon journeyed, in a road inn spent the night. The elder prays while the deacon sleeps, until an angel of God appeared to the elder and commanded that they immediately arise and from this road inn to depart. For the inn is soon to be destroyed. The young deacon, the elder, awakes, but the deacon fatigue slept on. In that, the angel appeared again and, and again the same morning. And again the elder and the deacon awakes, but a heavy sleep the deacon overpowered. One moment he awakes, the next moment he is drowned in sleep. And a third time the angel appeared, and a warning he issues for the third time. This was not a deceit, the elder perceived, but a warning from God, verily. The saint jumped, and the deacon he lifted, and from the road inn walked out. And as soon as they walked out of the inn to the foundation, the entire tire house was destroyed, and all those were in it perished, because of certain kinds of secret transgressions. With fright, the young deacon was filled, but in prayer the saint was silent. To the Most High God, they offered thanks. They continued their way under the stars. Today's reflection. St. Polycarp writes to the, fo the following to the Philippians about a priest, Valentine, who fell asleep, or excuse me, who fell into the sin of avarice and secretly hid money belonging to the church. I was deeply saddened because of Valentine, who at one time was a presbyter among us, who had forgotten the rank, meaning the priesthood, bestowed upon him. That is why I beg of you, beware of greed and remain pure and just. Restrain yourself from every vice. He who cannot restrain himself, how will he be able to teach others restraint? He who submits to avarice pollutes himself with idolatry and numbers himself the ranks of the pagans who are not aware of God's judgment. As St. Paul teaches, you do not know that the saints will judge the world. See 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. In other words, I have not noticed anything similar among you, neither have I heard anything among you, among those whom blessed Paul lived a life of asceticism, and about whom he speaks with praise at the beginning of his epistle to the Philippians. He boasts of you throughout the churches, which at that time knew God, and we did not yet know him. Brethren, that is why I am saddened because of Valentine and his wife. May God grant them true repentance, and you be prudent in that, and not count him as an enemy, see Second Thessalonians 3.15, but endeavor to correct them as suffering and prodigal members, that your entire body be sound, acting thusly you build yourself up. Thus the saints deal with sinners, cautiously and compassionately, cautiously to prevent others from a similar sin, compassionately in order to correct and save sinners and finally the contemplation for today to contemplate the lord jesus in conversation with the woman of samaria first how at first 
The mind of the woman was smothered completely with carnal sophistry. Second, how the meek lord gradually, gradually leads her mind towards a loftier and spiritual reading, reasoning. Three, how this encounter culminated in the, in the conversion of many to Christ. And finally, how the scattered seeds of the Lord, at first, seemingly decays in the physical mind, and how later it resurrects, and it grows, and it ripens, and brings forth much spiritual fruit. And may God bless you and those that you love today and always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.